What do we know, everybody? On this wonderfully windy Sunday, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about interests, hobbies, and depression. It's kind of a crazy combination, isn't it? And it's amazing how our interests and our hobbies and everything else change as we gain in years. Experience more things, like more things, dislike more things. I remember when I was a really little boy, I was my grandpa's shadow. I was his right hand man. And I joke around and I say that I was the only two year old that could tear a tiller engine apart, put it back together and make it run every single year. And that was the truth. That's what my grandpa and I did every year. We'd tear that thing apart on the concrete patio they had, put it all back together and everything would run. I mean, as a young kid, that was great to me. Using big boy tools and hanging out with grandpa, that was great. And as a girl grew up in you know, a small town, nothing really to do. I mean, you took interest in sports, obviously. I loved taking things apart, you know, be it lawnmower engines, up a washer, dryer went bad. I loved taking it apart and seeing how everything worked and went together. Loved it. Uh, bicycles, I loved taking them apart and switching parts around and all that good stuff. Dad, he was a body man. So I took an interest in that. I might take the little bikes I had and whatnot. You could go in the dollar store at the time and get a can of spray paint for a buck. And I used to spray paint those bikes and do all sorts of fun stuff. Had a little wagon that I had when I was a really little kid and I think I was like 12 or 13 and I repainted the thing red, which was the original color, and then I put silver flames on the side of it. It was a really, really cool thing way back then. But as I got older, interests changed. I took a liking to cooking, to grilling in particular. And I'd be able to go over to my grandma and grandpa's house all summer long and be able to grill. You know, cooking country style pork ribs and hamburgers, hot dogs, all stuff like that. I mean, it was a lot of fun. And I took a lot of pride in being able to go into my grandma's kitchen and cooking things that I just kind of made up on the spot. And my grandma joked around, said I should go when I turned 14 and start, you know, working at a restaurant or something like that in the kitchen, which would have been doable. But there was just something inside of me where I didn't want to just cook the same old things off the menu. I liked creating. As I got further into high school, I still have my other interests. I loved boxing, loved baseball. Uh, cars kind of faded into the background just a little bit, but I didn't have the money that some of the other kids had to go out and do cool things with the cars, you know, let alone pay for the gas to go cruise around in them. But I took an interest in magic, uh, the mentalism, the psychological part of the whole deal. I loved that. Um, took an interest in art. I was a fantastic artist in high school. I won a lot of awards and all that fun stuff. But once I graduated high school, that's where things kind of changed. You go to college and you kind of figure out there's people that have similar personalities to you and then you start trying to figure out who you are what it is that you really truly enjoy not something that you enjoy that's within your limitations be it where you're from or the money that you have but what do you truly enjoy and i didn't really know i graduated college i had to come back home because i didn't have money to go elsewhere and i fell into a pretty good depression with the way I was treated at the body shop. And I didn't have many interests. You know, when I was a kid, I liked going fishing. As an adult, I didn't want to do it. You sit out there all day long trying to catch a fish, you get lost in your thoughts, and everything just gets miserable. And those that have anxiety and depression can vouch for that. So every time I come to a weekend when I was working at the body shop, the only thing I could do was live in fear about going back to work on Monday. 
When I left that, and I became a butcher. Well, that was a lot of fun. I mean, my interests there were just listening to baseball, watching baseball, and learning. Learning as much as I could about the meat, where it comes from, how it's cut up, different ways to cut things up, different ways to present stuff. And I took a huge liking to that, and I devoted most of my time and energy to thinking about that and working on that to try to become the best. But it isn't much of a hobby, is it? doing research and everything else for work. I didn't have the money to go out and go to big league games or to do anything like that. So it was what it was. I mean, at that point, everything was pretty happy. Uh, when the people I was working for floated a couple out of California, then everything got miserable again. And then all my time and energy that I had was devoted to pretty much keep myself going and uh, take care of the customers that I had. They treated me very poorly. They treated the customers very poorly. And my anxiety was horrible. Depression was horrible. I mean, it was all bad every step of the way. Every day was a challenge. I didn't know what to do. When I finally left there to go work for the competition for a little while. The only thought in my head was survive. Survive financially, that was it. I didn't make much money. I didn't have any real interests. I didn't have anything to really occupy my time or anything that really brought me joy. I mean, I was pretty down and out. When I left all that to go drive a truck, I had money. But people would ask me what I wanted in my life, what I saw 10 years down the road, I couldn't tell them. They asked me what my life's goals were, I couldn't tell them. I mean, I didn't have any goals. The past number of years since I graduated high school were solely around surviving, about making enough money to live. And you get caught up so much doing that you forget what you really enjoy and I tried so hard when I was driving the truck when I was pulling flatbed to try to find something that interested me and try to find something that I enjoyed and I couldn't do it and then I met my wife and when I met my wife I had something that I enjoyed I didn't have any real interests. I didn't have any real hobbies. All I really had was a stubborn attitude and someone that I wanted to go see as often as I could. She was my interest. She is my interest. I mean, every time that I left on the road, all I could think about was being able to get back home to her. And through all the years of pulling flatbed and pulling bull rack and doing all of that, every time I left on the road, I was working so hard just to get back home to her. And when I come off the road, there wasn't anything that I really wanted to do. I mean, I don't really care for movies or Tourist attraction deals, I don't really care for groups of people, but I care for her. And my way out of the trucking industry really started when I started dating her. And then when we got married, I knew that I didn't want to be on the road anymore. I didn't want to do this anymore. I searched around for different job opportunities that would suit me a little bit and maybe my transition off of the road a little bit better plus something that would pay well enough to survive I mean that's one of the big deals right any monkey can come off the street and go work at a manufacturing plant but with what they pay it doesn't really pay enough to pay your bills and I found out that my wife was pregnant 
then we really, really put it into high gear just to get off of the road. And I've been working as a farmhand here for over a year. I don't think quite two yet. But I still find myself wondering what interests me, what do I enjoy? And here's some things that I found. I enjoy cooking, baking. I particularly enjoy working with meat. I'm excellent with the smoker. I make all my own seasonings, all my own spices. Um, I make hot dogs and same thing. I mix up all my own recipes. I don't use a box seasoning. I don't use other people's recipes. Everything is my own. I love cooking. Butchering. I love butchering when I get a chance to trim up meat and do that kind of stuff. I love it. But where I've been out of it for so long as far as working in that industry, I don't know if I could acclimate myself to it again unless I did it on my own. I mean, it's kind of the same thing with the cooking. I mean, I may be really, really good at it, but when I got to go do it for someone else, and try to do it their way, then it might not be as good, or I won't have the freedom to do things like I like to do. And I'm really proud of the stuff that I do. Working on the farm, I mean, my favorite thing to do there is the fixed stuff. You know, not the facilities or stuff, but the, the vehicles. You know, be it the semi, the feed truck, the tractors, the implements things like that, that's what I like to do. I'm not too fond of sitting in the tractor, I'm not too fond of working with the cattle, I'm not too fond of fixing the facilities, I'm not worth the darn as an arc welder, I can MIG weld pretty good. But just the same as when I went to college. You know, my favorite part of going to college was sheet metal fabrication. And again, I've been out of that so long that I don't think that I could really acclimate myself working in a shop doing that, at least with any sort of efficiency. But I do enjoy when I get to fabricate things. Body work. There are things about body work that I really enjoy, things about it that I really don't. And I, every time I embark on one of these deals, I still have the flashbacks of working in the body shop and how I was treated there. Uh, right now, I'm restoring my grandpa's old toolbox. Uh, when I was 18, that was kind of my graduation gift. Got the top, top chest and bottom roll cab. It was an old machinist box. So the drawers aren't that deep. I mean, you can't hold a lot of stuff in them, but still a lot of sentimental value. So I'm doing the body work on that, going to repaint it, and everything's going to be peachy with it. I might do some mechanic work on the side. I went out this last week and helped a guy figure out the wiring on one of his tractors. I've had people contact me about doing body work and they don't like the prices so much because they don't think, I don't know. You give them book times and they don't like the book times, they want you to do it for nothing, which is typical of a lot of things. I mean, I'm not going to worry about it too much. But, you know, sitting back and thinking, you know, man, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? What hobbies do you have? I mean, you see guys that go out and they golf. I mean, I could never golf. It's not my thing. And there's guys that'll go out and they'll build race cars or other things in their garage. Well, that's all well and good, but I get one day off, maybe, every two weeks. I'm not going to devote all my time to doing that and trying to hit a track, let alone putting all the money into that. It's not going to be my thing. But I do enjoy cooking, smoking meat. I love making the sausages and the wieners. I love the butchering part of everything. So I really don't know. What I do know is that one day I want to work for myself. But I really don't, I really don't know doing what. I think about it every day. 
but it's just kind of the nature of anxiety and depression. You look at the things that you want to do and then you look at every single little thing that holds you back. You know, banker never going to give you a loan. Not knowing the right people to get into a place to be able to do this. Not being in the right place at the right time to get things to make it a little easier. You always know, take being a butcher. Got to be able to do that. I got to be able to chill meat. Be able to age meat. And to get a either a walk-in cooler or to get a refrigerated trailer at a decent enough price, I'm never in the right place at the right time. I mean, if I had something like that, then I could do a mobile business. So I could go out there and do mobile kills and age it at home, cut it up, package it up, and have them come to me to get it. Everything would work great. I know there's guys in other states that'll kill, cut, wrap in the same day. I'm not particularly on that bandwagon. But I take a whole lot of pride in what I do. And to me, the cut is not near as good if it hasn't sat for very long. I mean, and it, the difference that it makes sitting for 24 hours versus doing it right next, you know, right after you kill, it's insane. It makes a big difference. Let that meat tighten up a little bit and that way you're not mushing things up in the grinder. Everything works out a lot better. You know, say body work. Yeah, I can do body work on the side. I can have people come in. I can do just about anything you want to do, but paint is a big deal. To find a place that can mix your paint, give you the, at least a close enough alternate to make it work so you can blend it out, it's pretty hard. I mean, back where I'm originally from, there was a town, next town over, you go to the parts store and they could do that. Yeah, they don't have that down here. And I don't have anywhere near enough money to get a full mixing bank, especially if I'm not going to do it all that often. Uh, turning wrenches, mechanic work. I can do a lot of different things. I can do a lot of things really, really well. But that there are stuff, or there are things deeper into the engines that I really don't want to embark on, and different diagnostic issue, issues that I don't want to deal with. Not because I don't think I can do it, but because I'm not experienced enough in that sort of thing to feel confident charging somebody for that. It is what it is. But I do sit here periodically, and I think about what I enjoy. I mean, I enjoy my family, my wife, my son. From time to time, I enjoy listening to baseball games, watching baseball games. Um, it is what it is. But at any rate, guys, I think I've rambled on long enough for you here. I'm going to cut this off here. i got a couple of ribeye steaks going to make for the wife and the boy and myself. And it's going to be a good night. But as always, guys, I thank you all for watching.